Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. I have my good friend Knox um, from Sysdig, who is going to give us a briefing on um, security and forensics best practices on OpenShift and tell us all kinds of WTF things. I'm, lo I'm loving that you use that in the, the title because I think it's the first time anyone's ever used that, so that's great. And um, I'm going to let Knox introduce himself. He'll do a good job of it. He's, he's promised a pretty lively demo. If you want to ask questions, ask them in the chat. We'll make him pause and take a breath, and he can answer questions. Um, but otherwise, we'll have a live Q&A at the end um, where you, anything that doesn't get answered in the chat, um, we'll, we'll reiterate them. Um, and we are recording this session. So Knox, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Diane. So um, hey, everyone. I'm Knox from Sysdig. Um, I work on the product marketing side for Sysdig Secure. And we've actually got some awesome content for you today. We're going to be covering um, mainly a live demo. Um, I'm going to go in, um, cause some vulnerabilities to happen, and then look at a, a live OpenShift environment, um, how you can do forensics in there, and do a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to try to get through these slides as quickly as possible, and then um, get down and dirty in the command line and show you everything else that's going on there. So uh, what's on tap for today? We're going to talk a little bit about security with containers at a high level, um, how it's changing, um, how you architect your applications, um, what you need to uh, kind of build out your systems, and how you can actually enable better security through OpenShift and containers. Um, then we're going to move on to kind of the, the architecture that you want to, co to collect data from your systems, look a little bit more about um, the Sysdig secure capabilities, how we can help you deliver um, secure services through OpenShift, and then um, go into the live demo and instrumentation from there. High level on Sysdig, um, we're the container intelligence company, and we're going to provide uh, unified security, monitoring, and troubleshooting uh, from a single instrumentation point. And a background on us, um, our founder was the uh, co-creator of a popular uh, network packet analyzer that many of you guys have probably used called Wireshark. Um, from there, he went and launched Sysdig, um, our open source project, which is kind of like if you took a TCP dump, LSOF, uh, S-Trace, HTOP, and just mashed them in, into one, um, and then layered on some container goodness. Uh, that's our open source tool. Um, that launched in 2013, um, million plus downloads and hundreds of thousands of users there. And then um, from there, we've launched our container intelligence platform, which is made up of Sysdig Monitor, Sysdig Secure, um, and we have 300 plus enterprise customers um, using that to kind of safely and uh, securely uh, deploy containers into production. And we have um, really deep integrations with OpenShift um, and use of major enterprises. So um, we take all that OpenShift metadata to heart and allow you to um, really layer that on for service performance monitoring, service oriented security, um, all those kind of things. So uh, what we're going to really talk about today is the convergence of two challenges. Um, first, the one of kind of operating containers in production, um, what that means, uh, how, how it looks for different groups, and then go from there and look at um, how you can enable effective, uh, scalable security of these diverse uh, past workloads that you're running um, on OpenShift. All right. So, um, Containers are, everyone refers to them as black boxes, and um, they're great for development and great for operations, but what does that mean for your, um, like your NOC or your SOC teams that are really there to focus on how do I get visibility into those systems? So um, on the development side, containers are awesome. They're black boxes, you can put your code in them, you can execute, execute that, they're repeatable. And then on the operation side, um, you can move these around really easily. Now my database doesn't have to be on one node. It can be on multiple nodes. It can be uh, scattered out through OpenShift. Um, and there's all these layers of orchestration that are making it really easy to deploy applications in multiple location locations. But how do you uh, keep track of all those containers as they're moving and they're scaling um, without going and putting in a sidecar container or something like that? And then how do you also make sense of these services that are now scattered across uh, multiple nodes and and uh, make sense of them as that single logical service or that OpenShift deployment um, and the pods that roll up into them. So this is kind of some of the challenges that you'll face. 
Um, but with challenges always come opportunities. And we really think that containers off offer an opportunity for you to have better security. So there's controllable attack services. Um, it's a single isolated container. That black box that we looked at before should really only have one process running inside of it. So it makes it a whole lot easier um, to kind of lock that down, get that isolation um, through your different C groups and namespaces as well um, for that controllable attack surface. Uh, you also have much easier time doing um, robust configuration and change management. So it's really easy to um, roll back to a certain image or uh, make a change to an image and push that out across your whole uh, infrastructure really quickly than kind of going in what we're seeing in your uh, typical VM mode right now where people are going out and having to patch um, different servers, patch different services. With containers, you can just um, cube CTL or deploy a new OpenShift service, and then from there, you've deployed um, a new version out to your entire infrastructure. Uh, that same po process isolation also makes it really easy for you to do anomaly detection. So um, if you've got an Nginx container and um, it's communicating through non-standard ports or if there's some other process besides Nginx running inside that container, it's a whole lot easier to go and spot, okay, something's going wrong inside this container rather than this VM where you'd have tens or hundreds of processes running on top of it. And then it also really lends uh, an opportunity with containers um, and OpenShift to do more of that zero day threat protection and behavioral monitoring. So looking at the activities that are coming from those containers um, and running those through a pipeline so that um, those easily baselineable activities, you can then spot anomalies against and really look for fundamentally malicious behavior that's happening on those systems. So how can you uh, really deliver that uh, security to your, to your environment? And um, you can really do that if your security stack is architected for containers. Um, so what do I mean by that? You need to have full visibility into every single container that's running across your infrastructure, um, down to the process level of what's on it running inside the system calls, um, without you having to do any of that uh, per container instrumentation. Uh, next, you need to have kind of automated ad adaptive security policies. So policies that you can scope to a certain OpenShift deployment, um, or even the individual pods that roll up into a deployment, and have those policies that are gonna scale as new services come out, and really rely on the metadata um, and the different things that your orchestrator like OpenShift is providing. Um, the thing that I think is probably the most important is this non-disruptive unified instrumentation. So if you're deploying um, tens, tens to twenties of containers per host, um, and we're really seeing the density kind of grow up as um, uh, more and more companies are moving uh, to use containers in production. Uh, you really don't want to have a sidecar container or go and inject um, some process inside each one of your containers. So you kind of need a single unified instrumentation um, that isn't going to go and uh, mess with the Docker daemon or um, be going and sitting as a sidecar to each container. You need to keep that um, instrumentation kind of lightweight um, from a single point on that host um, without having to go and think about those containers as each an individual point where you'd want to instrument. And then last, um, being service and orchestrator aware. So understanding exactly how OpenShift is uh, deploying your containers across your infrastructure and then having specific policies um, and actions that are tuned against that. And then also giving you the ability to use that metadata to then go and uh, track down all the commands that were executed across um, a specific OpenShift service or the pods within that. All right, so now that we've kind of gone to, okay, what do we, what do we need to think about um, with OpenShift and the containers that are running there, and how am I gonna de deploy and operationalize a security? Let's go and look at our architecture and how kind of we've addressed some of these problems. So uh, before we get into that, I'm gonna just talk a bit, little bit about where Cystic Secure um, sit, fits in your security stack. So uh, we're really focused on two main aspects here. Um, runtime security and forensic security. So runtime security doing your um, intrusion detection, um, lateral movement, data exfiltration, so seeing if um, your database has spawned an unexpected outbound connection, um, if sensitive data was read from that, um, and really looking for kind of fundamentally malicious behavior um, happening on your host. 
Um, and that can be through system calls, processes, ports, um, pretty much everything that makes a system call will be able to uh, pick up and then layer on um, this runtime security. And then the other side with containers um, is forensics. And a lot of times when a container gets killed, you're basically screwed. You've lost all your data. Um, someone starts a shell inside that container. You can't really see what's going on. They've killed the container. It's all gone. Um, we've really built a unique way to get a buffering capture of all the system activity pre and post any security violation. So you have the full breadcrumb trail of every single thing that's uh, been happening in your environment. Um, and this is something I'll go in much deeper to uh, kind of in the demo. Uh, on top of that, we're going to integrate with your existing platform security and IT security. So uh, we'll integrate with plat uh, cloud forms, um, be able to pull in events from there. If you have vulnerabilities that are discovered, um, RBAC, things like that. Um, we integrate with those, set up user credentials, um, can ingest events from those into kind of our events API and allow you to have a really tight integration um, with us and OpenShift there. And then for your existing IT security, um, our product is entirely REST uh, API driven. So um, sending out every single ex executed command um, from that OpenShift environment uh, to your existing SIM or logging tool um, or just doing and all your uh, user tracking uh, to your governance committees and things like that. Uh, all the data that we collect can be fully exported out um, to any other system. All right, so now I'm going to get into the architecture. Um, the, our container intelligence platform is really built up of two main components that I'm going to be getting into further. Um, the first is container vision, and this is our uh, ability to see all app activity, network activity, host activity, um, without going and instrumenting um, any of your containers. Um, from here, we'll also we'll automatically discover any application metrics, um, system metrics, all that kind of stuff on the monitoring side from that uh, individual uh, container that's running on the host. And then the second is service vision, where we're going to go and enrich every single piece of data that we collect and send through our data pipeline with all the metadata that OpenShift is exposing. And um, all of that can be sent to our backend, which you can use as a SaaS service or deploy, deploy it on-premise um, on your own infrastructure. And that backend is something that can be um, fully uh, managed by OpenShift uh, or Kubernetes as well. Okay, so um, from there, um, that single instrumentation and that single backend, um, we actually layer on three different products. So you can use Sysdig Secure, um, Sysdig Monitor, or Sysdig Inspect. And there's no performance impact of using um, any of those on top of each other. So uh, you just are really going to have that single container per host that's going to give you full visibility into everything that's running. All right. So uh, I've talked a lot about how we use this data, um, the data that you want to collect from containers, um, but how do you actually go about doing it? So what we're looking at now is a uh, simple host. Um, I've got a host OS running here. I've got a custom container. I've got an open source app, so something like Nginx running here. Um, and what we do is deploy our agent as a container or a process uh, running on that host. Uh, our containers, uh, Red Hat and OpenShift certified. Um, and from there, that container is going to load um, a unique kernel instrumentation that we have. Um, this instrumentation is part of our open source tool. Um, it's part of our open source security tool, Sysdig Falco. Um, and is used in kind of millions of machines, government agencies, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that kernel instrumentation is going to um, see every single system call happening from every single container um, through non-blocking read, and then put that into a ring buffer um, where our agent can go and process that at user space to see all commands, events, um, take get performance metrics, um, basically anything that's happening on that host. Um, we can see and detect, protect, and troubleshoot from that single instrumentation point. Um, on top of that, we've layered on a rules engine. So uh, rules for uh, kind of any, any file access, port scanning, um, any connection or executed program that's running um, on that host or within that container. Um, we'll detect at the agent level and then allow you to do policy enforcement. So killing a container, um, pausing a container, committing a container to then uh, quarantine it, um, run it through workloads later, um, all from that from that agent that's running on the host. And then the last component 
um, of the of our architecture service vision. So um, typically, you go and you look at your infrastructure from a physical view. Um, and if you're looking at an OpenShift infrastructure, it's going to look a lot like this. So you've got multiple different VMs. Um, there's a bunch of different scattered containers running across them. Um, but how do you make sense of that as logical services? And that's where we're going to integrate with OpenShift directly and allow you to think of uh, a logical service um, based on any piece of that open, open, uh, the OpenShift metadata so you can um, and enforce and explore policies um, based on any piece of this metadata. And um, this is something that we've done for kind of hundreds of different companies um, with OpenShift, uh, on-premise, using SaaS, um, really whatever you want. Um, that's something that uh, we're here to support you with your OpenShift journey. Um, and uh, now time, the thing that everyone's been waiting for, uh, let's get to the demo. So before I get to the demo, um, this is a time where I usually like to pause and see um, if there's any questions about um, our instrumentation, how we collect data, and things like that. I don't see anything popping into the chat yet. So um, why don't you do the demo, and I'm sure that's going to give us some questions. OK, cool. All right, so um, what I'm going to do now is something that you'll definitely never see from any other security or monitoring uh, vendor live on a demo. And I'm actually going to do an instrumentation of our container intelligence platform um, running on a containerized host. So as you can see now, we've got uh, kind of no, no data coming in. I've got Sysdig uh, Monitor running here. I've got Sysdig uh, Secure running. Um, really, nothing's going on in these environments. So now I can pull up my instance, um, run a quick Docker PS. Uh, you can see I've got a simple WordPress application running here. So I've got a load balancer. Um, a database, some WordPress services here. And now let's go and get that command to run our agent. So I can copy it right here. And let's switch over an assistic monitor so we can kind of see the real-time data stream in. And I'm actually going to just going to remove uh, the dash D so then we can see the output here. All right, so what this is doing is um, it's, it's loading our kernel module via DKMS. So we're going to look at the existing version of your kernel, um, build the module on top of that. Um, so it's not going to require a kernel restart or anything like that. And then if we scroll up within here, uh, you can see we're doing a bunch of different checks for um, if Kubernetes is running, um, StatsD metrics, if they're in the environment, um, JMX sampling, uh, all of that all automatically. Um, pulling any, any certificates, uh, searching out for any AWS metadata, Mesos metadata, um, and then pulling, pulling all of that automatically. And so now if we look kind of over into Sysdig Monitor, uh, you can see all the different containers that we're running have pulled up. Um, we can drill down into something like this WordPress container, see the performance of those. Um, but let's actually go and kind of look at it from a topology perspective. This is one of the things that kind of anyone in the PCI compliance space will see. You need to see every single network connection that's going on uh, in, your, in your environment. Uh, so if I go over to host and containers here really quickly, click back on entire infrastructure, um, I can see every single connection that's coming into this host, then drill down, see all the containers that are running there. I can even actually see the SSH process that's running on this host from the uh, ISP provider that we have in our office. And then I can actually go down all the way into uh, all these containers and see the individual process that's running inside and the network impact and all the network connection. Um, so this is something we installed our, our uh, agent on the host. It automatically discovered all this, um, had this pre-built mapping. And then you can actually go down a step further. And let me switch this to container name really quickly. Go over to something like MySQL. And we're going to automatically detect that MySQL is running, um, start pulling things like number of requests, number of errors, um, top queries, slowest queries, slowest tables, all automatically without you needing to do um, any other additional instrumentation. 
So here we're actually uh, decrypting that TCP connection and then reading the file descriptor. So you just install the agent and all of this is uh, discovered out of the box. So we've seen some of the visibility um, that gives you automatically. Now let's go in and do some stuff um, that you wouldn't expect or want to happen uh, in your environment. So uh, I'm gonna go back over here. Um, now you can see that we've got the Cystic agent running and um, let's go in and exec do one of my WordPress containers. All right, so now that I've kind of shelled into that container, um, let's start doing some stuff that um, really should never happen in your environment. So I'm gonna go in and inch and replace it, copy it over to, um, switch it over to LS. So basically now what I've done is kind of hidden the curl command as um, something that can be uh, kind of executed by kind of one of your standard system binaries. So then from here I can go and go ls openshift.com and I've essentially gone in and replaced uh, kind of ls with curl um, and have kind of masqueraded that uh, as a different process. So let's go over and look at this into secure and see uh, kind of what we've detected. So first off, no one should ever be able to shell in a container um, from what we've just seen, because basically now I can hide everything inside that container, execute stuff across my entire system um, once I got access inside. So let's look at um, what actually we discovered in Sysdig Secure. Um, first off, there's a whole lot more red uh, than before, and I can actually open up that host, um, click on that WordPress one container, and then switch over to this list view. And we can see, all right, first, um, there's this terminal shell um, that was run in a, in a container. Um, we had that right below a binary directory. And then there were system processes that had unexpected network activity. So I can click on any one of these, get full details about kind of the scope where it happened, the individual container, the host, and then actually the full output here um, with user commands and everything else that was running. Uh, I can also hop over to the commands history, um, click on the host, see every single command that was executed um, with full scoping of where it happened um, in my environment as well. So I always like to do the install to show kind of how easy it is to get up and running and the out of the box visibility you're gonna get from both a performance uh, monitoring perspective as well as a security perspective. All right, so now I'm gonna hop over to kind of a more robust um, OpenShift environment that we've got running and look at the, some of the different things that are going on there. So first off, I'm gonna start um, with our policies. And right now we're looking at them by severity. So we can see kind of some of the high severity policies that are running in my environment, um, different file policies, network policies, things like that. Um, but since you're using OpenShift or any, um, and deploying services and managing services and exposing those to developer groups, um, you really want to think of those as your logical entities that you're um, trying to protect. So now I can go and look at um, my entire environment based on scope and see the policies that are um, running across my entire infrastructure, um, protecting the hosts and containers, but then actually drill down into kind of specific deployments. So I can go in where we're using um, the deployment name equals Redis um, and trying to detect um, if there's some unexpected uh, outbound connection for Redis. So uh, your database, you don't want it uh, pinging out to the outside world um, and kind of tuning these policies um, on a deployment by deployment basis. I can also go in and add other data services to this if I wanted. So we can look at it from that kind of that logical perspective again, add something like MySQL and drill down from there. Um, from any policy, you can take actions. So you can go stop stop the container, pause the container, or create the assisted capture. And the really unique thing here is you can tune this for different policies to see how much um, system data you want to capture pre and post any policy violation. And since we're going to be writing 
um, kind of every single system call to that to that SCAP file. Um, for anyone in the audience who's used something like uh, Wireshark or TCP dump, um, this is kind of like a TCP dump of your kernel where you're going to see uh, every single system call pre and post um, that security violation and then can troubleshoot that uh, later. And we'll go through some of those examples. And then from here, um, you can send it out to um, kind of PagerDuty, Slack, VictorOps, OpsGenie, send it to CloudForms uh, via webhook, uh, kind of all, all automatically there. All right, so now that we've seen um, how policies um, are created, let's go in and kind of look at um, some of the events that have happened uh, in this OpenShift open environment. So if you're looking at your infrastructure from a typical perspective, you'll see something like this. So you've got a bunch of different hosts. Um, there's containers running on them. You can see which containers um, have had events um, and things like that. But like we've talked about before um, with OpenShift, you really want that service-oriented security. And we can switch over to this deployments view here and then drill into something like um, this Java namespace. And one of the easier ways to actually look at this is to go back to that topology map and go in and explore uh, where violations have happened um, kind of based on that logical infrastructure. So here we've drilled down into a specific namespace. We can see all the deployments that are running in them, drill into a specific deployment, and then actually see um, where the event happened at a pod or container level and all the different network connections and de the dependencies that have happened there. So let's drill into uh, kind of this policy violation that happened with Redis. And we can see, okay, there's an unexpected uh, outbound connection and then a sensitive file was read. Um, the really cool thing here is I have the full scoping of where this happened from a logical perspective, as well as that host and, and container. So if I need to go and quarantine that host, um, I can do that. But then I also have full knowledge of where this actually went and affected um, my OpenShift deployments, pods, uh, or any service that that's rolling up into. Uh, we can drill down further and look at the output here. So we can see, all right, there's an unexpected uh, outbound connection um, from this ftest command. And then after that, um, a sensitive file was open for reading um, by that same ftest command. And they're actually going and reading from Etsy Shadow. So um, they've immediately come in, uh, got access to my hash passwords, um, and are going and reading from it. So this is kind of one of your classic uh, data exfiltration examples um, that could be happening in your environment. Um, and from here, you can kind of tune this. So, okay, if I ever see something like this happen again, I can kill the container uh, or customize um, any of the out-of-the-box policies um, that we have in our environment. And kind of all these policies have been pulled in from, um, the, it, our rule engine integrates with our open source tool, Cystic Falco. Um, so we have tons of policies that have come in from the open source community, um, things that uh, cloud.gov or Yahoo is using to protect their infrastructure. And then uh, since we've been monitoring uh, millions of containers with years, uh, for years with Sysdig uh, Monitor, um, there's a lot of policies that we've auto-generated uh, based on classic workloads or baselines um, that we've really seen from your containerized infrastructure. So while you're taking right, so, a yeah. break here, let me ask uh, one of the questions that just popped up. I think that's right. Is there an ability to stop an entire pod altogether if a security violation is detected? Um, so we can stop. We can do a kind of container level um, stopping of those containers. Um, one of the things that you can also do is a webhook out um, to the cube API to go and stop a pod from there. Um, but the enforcement is done kind of at the at the container level right now. Okay. And th there was one other um, quick question. Uh, Doug was asking, um, what is the persistent store technology for all the events and logging for the Sysdig agent? Yeah, um, great question. So our backend architecture is really um, made up of two main technologies. Uh, the first would be Cassandra. So all of our uh, time series metrics and things like that are all sent. Um, to our Cassandra database. And then um, all the commands, history, events. Um, on the monitoring side, we also pull in uh, any Docker event or Kubernetes event. So if you've got a crash loopback or something like that, um, all of that data is sent to Elasticsearch. 
Uh, and those are the, the two kind of main components. Um, both of those uh, have uh, REST APIs. So if you want to export any of the data that we're collecting, uh, you can send it out. So we have a lot of customers that are kind of taking um, commands history data or uh, event generation data and sending that out to uh, things like Splunk. Cool. All right, carry on. Thanks for cool. Me... <laughs> awesome. That was a, a good a good break uh, before we get into some uh, forensics. So uh, thanks for thanks for sending those in. All right. So now um, I can go into this WordPress environment, um, this namespace here, and drill down into this specific uh, WordPress deployment deployment that's running there. So um, we can see this policy violation that happened where there's a shell in a container, kind of the same thing that I had sh uh, shown before. Um, I can click on it, see kind of that same logical information that we saw earlier. Um, but here with this policy, we actually uh, recorded a capture and then there's commands that are associated with it as well. So I can go click on view commands and this is gonna drop me back in time uh, to that point in time when the event happened and give me all the commands that were executed around that specific security violation. So from here, I can see, all right, um, the user spawned a shell, um, they curled down a, a, a URL and then untarred it. So from here, I can actually click on any row and get really deep information about that specific command. So we can see from the full command line here, um, they actually curled down a rootkit um, so this looks sketchy. I'm definitely going to want to do further forensic analysis here. Um, we, we can see the working directory, the PID, uh, user ID, shell distance, all that kind of stuff uh, automatically. Um, and then that user untarred that command. And um, so they've done, they've done some pretty malicious stuff here. Um, I can click over onto captures now and do further analysis of that capture um, at that point in time when the event happened. So if I click on uh, this button here, we're gonna open up Sysdig Inspect. And Sysdig Inspect is kind of our forensics tool to do a full analysis of kind of every single thing that's been happening in your environment. So you can see kind of all file access patterns, network activity, network apps, um, app log messages, uh, your full HTTP requests and payloads. Um, all of this data is gonna be captured here uh, in a really easy to filter way. So let's set the stage first with looking at when did that notification happen? And then I can isolate um, a specific time around that notification. So we can actually look at kind of sub-second granularity in here if you wanted to, uh, and then start overlaying things like kind of file access patterns, um, network bytes in, um, and then those executed commands um, that we saw uh, earlier in the commands history. So this is right here when that user spawned the shell. And then we can see probably, okay, this is when they curled down that URL. There's a bunch of different file access, things like that. So any one of these tiles you can drill down into and get really rich information uh, kind of about that tile and use that as a jumping off point. So right now we can see those same uh, executed commands. So I can see the user started a shell, curled down that rootkit, and then untarred it. And then from here, I can actually drill down in and do further analysis of what actually happened when that tar process was executed. So if I double click on that tar process and then switch over to this files view, now I can see every single file that was written at that point in time um, when that tar process was executed. So we can see um, basically that rootkit was unzipped um, it wrote a readme, an install script, all that kind of stuff. And then from here, we can actually go in another step further and use our IO streams functionality to actually look at the individual contents that were written to that file. So just taking a step back here, um, we detected a user spawned a shell in a container, kicked off a capture, and then can go and drill down all the way from um, what, what individual rootkit they installed uh, from there, uh, how it was unzipped, every single file that was written, and then the actual individual contents that were into that file. Any questions right now about kind of uh, the forensic side, Cystic Inspect, how that works, um, and, and things like that? There's one question here. Um, uh, can network payloads be inspected and viewed? Yeah, so let's go into 
kind of this HTTP request. Um, from here, we can see basically all the different contents, um, the headers, things like that. So right now we're pulling in, seeing the individual kind of full payload of, of these requests. I think, I think that answers his question. Awesome. And then you, you can get your fork counts, fork trees, um, all, all that kind of stuff, um, all within here. If you want to see all the different processes that we're running, um, drill down into uh, kind of the individual system calls from a process, um, all the way down into really every single thing that made a system call during that point in time, um, you've got this full visibility. Um, and the really nice thing is it's buffered. So you can see what led up to that security event, how they might have gotten access, and then how it was um, affecting all the systems and everything else that ran afterwards. Um, that's about it that I had planned on the demo side today. Um, right now, I'd really love to kind of open it up to questions um, and, and hear everything else that uh, kind of you guys have to say or if, if there's anything else that um, you really want me to show. Well, what I would like you to show while we're waiting for people to ask questions is um, perhaps your final slide on how to get a hold of you. So um, while we're asking questions and anyone who's watching the video can see where the resources are um, to, to contact you afterwards. There you go. So I actually don't have one of those slides prepared right now. Uh, the, easiest, the easiest way to always contact us is on our website. Um, so uh, within here, um, you can actually start a free trial of Sysdig Monitor um, or Sysdig Secure, request a further demo, um, do all that kind of stuff. So if you go to sysdig.com, um, you'll have full access. And then um, if you want to follow up with me directly, my email is really easy. It's just Knox, K -N -O -X, at sysdig.com. Cool. So you, you mentioned um, Falco. Um, where is that hiding in um, the internet? and on GitHub and 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 how um, maybe a little bit about how you differentiate um, the open source stuff and the commercial stuff. Yeah, so um, Falco, um, it's got its own GitHub page. Um, so Falco is really the rules engine. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't allow you to take actions, um, pull in any of that OpenShift metadata or things like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's our uh, open source security rule engine that's kind of similar to like if you had combined like some things from SE Linux, some things from OSEC, some stuff from S-Trace, um, kind of, and built it for containers. Um, that's that's kind of where uh, Sysdig Falco sits. Um, and it's really that behavioral activity monitor. Um, so it, it'll just send alerts to standard out and things like that. Um, Sysdig Secure is really built for securing um, and monitoring that entire platform, um, where Falco is more of a, a single host, uh, kind of a behavioral activity monitor. Perfect. All right, well, I am not seeing any questions and your demo uh, uh, was awesome and it didn't crash in any way, shape or form. So I'm, I'm pretty um, impressed with that since you said this was the first time you were doing this variation on it. Um, so kudos to you for, for pulling it off. Um, I'm um, going to give people a couple more minutes, a couple of seconds here. If there's any questions, there's a bunch of people on there, but they're, um, they've asked most of their questions during your presentation. So um, I'd just say uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I know the folks from Sysdig will be in London with us at the upcoming OpenShift Commons um, gathering that we're hosting again on January 31st in London. Um, if you're looking for information about that, you can just go to commons.openshift.org and there's information there. Um, there's one um, person asking a question now um, talking about how um, sort of product differentiation between some of the other security apps um, or applications um, like Twistlock or Aqua Security. Um, are you, do you feel confident about talking about that or would you like to hold that? We could maybe have a panel on that sometime soon. Um, that's a great panel question. At the high, just doing the highest level and then we can follow up directly a little bit more about um, individual features and functions. Uh, we're a container intelligence platform. So you're really gonna have this single agent that's running on your host that's gonna be able to give you 
that full monitoring visibility, full troubleshooting visibility, and security visibility um, from that single instrumentation point. So uh, it's really one way to get full insight into uh, every single thing in your system than having separate monitoring agents and things like that that are adding uh, more attack services or more, more of a performance hit. Uh, so that's the high level of how we would compare against those. Um, and then I can follow up directly uh, with more information about uh, individual features and how they'd be uh, comparing. Yeah. I think that's a good one um, for a panel at an upcoming gathering or event. Um, it would be interesting to hear that, but I, I do appreciate you taking the time today. And everybody who's joined us, we will um, put the slides up on blog.openshift.com shortly along with the video, and it will be up on our YouTube channel as soon as um, it's processed and ready, so probably about a day. So um, thank, again, thank you again, Knox, for, for joining us. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Diane, and uh, thanks, everyone, for all the questions that you sent in today.